I've entitled our message this morning, Persistent Prayer. Uh, We're in a series, Prayer That God Answers, and we found several requirements in God's Word for Him to answer our prayers. First of all, we must be praying according to God's will. If we're asking for something perhaps we want that's not God's will, He's he's not going to answer those prayers. So we need to pray according to God's will. Secondly, we need to pray in faith. James tells us that if we pray, ask God for something, and we don't believe he's going to give it to us, then he's not going to. We need to pray with faith. And today, we're going to be talking about the third requirement for prayer to be answered. We need to pray persistently. We need to pray until the answer comes. If we stop praying before the answer comes, then our prayer will not be answered. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17, you can follow along in the white page in the middle of your bulletin. The outline is written there. It says, pray without ceasing. That's an instruction that is a command. Other translations say, pray continually or pray constantly or never stop praying. Now, sometimes when I've read that, I felt a little intimidated. You know, it's like, how can you do that? I mean, I have other things to do, God. How can I, how can I pray without ceasing. What, what do you mean? Well, I believe it means we need to be in constant communication with God. We need to be aware of his presence. We need to be talking to him in our hearts, maybe not verbalizing it, in our spirits as we go through the day, as we are at work, as we're interacting with our family. We're talking to God about what is going on. We're not only talking to him, we're listening for him to speak to us, to give us direction, to give us guidance, to give us understanding. Ephesians 6.18 says, praying at all times. Well, that's pretty close to praying constantly, isn't it? Praying at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. And so we should pray in the Spirit. That means, it's another way of saying praying according to God's will. The Holy Spirit within us helps us to pray. To pray the things that our God wants to see accomplished. Jesus told a parable in Luke 18. He said the parable was to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. Always to pray and not lose heart. And in this parable, Jesus told a story about an unjust judge and a widow who came to him to receive justice for her case. The judge didn't want anything to do with this widow, but she kept coming over and over again. And finally, she wore him down. He said, okay, to get rid of you, I'm going to give you justice. I'm going to give you what you asked for. And Jesus concludes the parable in verse 7 and 8. He says, and will not God give justice to his elect? who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? And so Jesus was saying, if this unjust judge, who's not a good judge, finally gave this widow what she asked for because she was so persistent, how much more will God answer the prayers of his children who cry out to him once? No, it says, who cry out to him day and night, who cry out to God constantly until the answer comes. But Jesus says, when he comes, will he find faith on earth? You see, faith and persistence in prayer are are linked together. If you have faith, that God's going to answer your prayer, you're going to persist in praying until the answer comes. If you lose faith, you're going to what? Stop praying. I mean, why would you pray if you didn't believe God was going to answer the prayer? And so if you lose faith, you're going to stop praying. And so today we're going to talk about persisting in prayer. And we're going to focus again, as we did last week, on praying for lost people People who are not saved, whether they're people, a relative, a friend, a co-worker, whoever it may be that God has put into your life, it's God's will that they be saved. 
And since he's put them in your life, God's going to have you pray persistently in faith until they come to Jesus Christ. So how can we learn to pray persistently? Well, we need to make a decision to be persistent in our prayer. Jesus told us in Luke eleven nine, 9, I tell you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Now, Jesus had just told a story previous to this verse in which a man went in the middle of the night at midnight to a friend's house. He needed a loaf of bread, a loaf of bread to feed a guest. And he knocked on the door and the friend didn't open the door. He said, I'm asleep. Go back home. I'm not going to get up and, un- and open the door for you. The man kept on knocking on the door. Knocked and knocked and knocked. And finally, his friend opened the door and gave him what he wanted. And this was a story to illustrate the persistence that we need to have in prayer. The persistence in knocking on heaven's gate, on heaven's door, until the answer comes. Why do we sometimes have trouble in being persistent? Well, we become, we become weary. Galatians 6, 9 says, And let us not grow weary in doing good, for in due season we'll reap if we do not give up. Sometimes we pray for something for a while, and what do we usually expect? What do we want? We want the answer to come, and we want the answer to come quickly, right? It would be nice if we prayed today and the answer came tomorrow. How often does that happen? Sometimes. Uh, Usually it doesn't happen that often. Usually it takes some time. And when something takes some time, sometimes we grow weary. Oh, do I have to pray about this again? And then sometimes we lose faith. Like maybe God's not going to answer this prayer. God's word commands us not to be weary. If we're praying something that we're convinced is God's will, keep on praying. Until the answer comes. You see our prayers are are like seeds that are planted in the ground. And it takes time as we pray for those seeds to sprout. For those seeds to grow up into plants. And for those plants finally to bear fruit. That is the harvest or the answer to our prayers. It often takes time. Especially for the topic we're talking about today. Of praying for lost people, people who are not saved. Let's not become weary. In fact, you see that that is a command. Let us not grow weary. We are not to grow weary. We are to rely on God's strength. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things. You might want to circle that. All things. Some things. No, I can do all things through Him who strengthens me. When we're doing God's work, He's going to give us the strength. He's going to give us the perseverance to complete it. There are times when you may be praying for something and it's like, oh, I, I don't know, is this ever going to happen? And God strengthened me to keep on praying, to keep on believing. Because when we're praying for lost people, their eternal destiny is at stake. That's the most important thing you could be praying for. Believe that As you're persistent in your prayers, God will answer those prayers. My wife's father, Carol's father, was not uh, raised by Christian parents. That that would be our, Carol's grandparents. They thought they were Christians. They went to church. They were nice people. They were, treated people well. But they had no personal relationship with Jesus Christ. When Carol was in middle school, she and her family became believers. They gave their heart to Jesus and they began to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and began attending a Bible-believing church. And the whole family began to pray for the grandparents that they would be saved. But for years and years, nothing seemed to happen. In fact, for a time, the grandparents would not even talk to Carol's parents because they had left the church that they had grown up in. The years came and the years passed. And finally, the grandparents, both grandparents, 
parents became terminally ill. We're in the hospital and we're close to passing on. In both cases, a pastor went to pray with them in the last weeks that they had on earth. And both of them prayed to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And so persistence in prayer over a period of years saw the harvest reaped. And we will see them one day again in heaven. Not only must we be persistent in prayer, we must learn to accept God's burden. Psalm 126 says, Those who sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. He who goes out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. And so to pray for the lost is to take on a burden for their eternal destiny. Is the care enough for them that you're going to persist in prayer, even in tears, sowing even in tears until God's answer comes? Now, if you listen to God carefully, He will place His burden on your heart for the salvation of certain people. We can't pray for, what, 7 billion people in the world But God will put certain people on your heart. In fact, he's put certain people in your life. Friends, relatives, co-workers. And out of those, he's going to put a burden on your heart for certain ones, oftentimes those closest to you that are not saved. And as you accept that burden from God, he will motivate you to pray persistently for their salvation. And as we do, we need to pray with, with passion. Paul wrote in Romans 10.1, Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God for them is that they may be saved. And Paul was talking about various Jews that had not accepted Jesus as their Messiah. And he, it was his heart's passion and his prayer that they would be saved. And he prayed for them continually and many of them were. He had a deep desire that they would be saved. God wants us to have, when we pray, to have a a deep desire, a passion that God would work, a concern for people that are far from God. And as we pray for people, as we pray through this burden that God gives us for different people, we need to witness boldly as well. 2 Corinthians 5.20 says, Therefore we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. Now it would be nice if prayer was the end of the story. And sometimes it is. Sometimes all God calls us to do is pray. But rarely is it the end of the story. Most often when we have God's burden and we're praying passionately for something, God will direct us to take action. In the case of praying for people's salvation, especially people that we know, God will speak to us as we pray for them and give us words to witness to them, to talk to them about Christ. A witness that's backed up by days, months, years of prayer is a very will be a very powerful witness because God is preparing their hearts to receive the word. Now we need to be or have ears that are sensitive to the Holy Spirit to guide us in the words to say and when to speak and when to be silent, when to wait for God to move, when to see when it's time for us to speak a word as well as pray. It's all about accepting God's burden and praying it through. I heard a story about a woman named Chrissy who was awakened at night as the phone rang. And she answered the call. And it was her older brother on the line. And he said, Sister, I've just invited Jesus into my life. I, I've been saved. And the preacher said, I should tell somebody immediately. So I'm calling you because I know you've been praying for me for so long, for, for years. And Chrissy didn't know what to say. It was such a shock because 
her brother had been so far from God. She tried to share Jesus with him at their mother's funeral and he screamed at her. He was on his third wife. He was antagonistic to all the things of God for years. And yet somehow, as she prayed over the years, her prayers had finally been answered. And he was set free. And God can do the same for us as we pray for those. Now, as time passes, sometimes we're tempted to think it's hopeless. It's not. As we pray, God is working. God is moving. And he's going to break through. We're praying for new children in the family of God. Jesus said in John 1, 12, But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. And so when a person believes for the first time, when they put their faith in Jesus Christ, they become a child of God. Jesus says they are born again. You see, every person is born physically. That's the first birth. We need to be born again, spiritually born again, when we become believers in Jesus. And so when we pray for people to be saved, we're actually praying that they would be born again, that they would be spiritually born again, that they would become children of, of God. We cannot cause that to happen. It's the Holy Spirit that does the work. And so we must ask for the Holy Spirit to work in the lives, in the hearts of the people that we are praying for. Titus 3.5 says he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal by the Holy Spirit. And so people are born again through the work of the Holy Spirit. That's as we pray it, it what should I say? Our prayers cause the Holy Spirit to be to work in a people's lives in a special way. The Holy Spirit can work in a number of ways to draw people to Jesus Christ. And we can pray that the Holy Spirit would bring, first of all, a conviction of sin. Because people need to repent of their sins in order to be born again. We need to pray for the conviction of sin. And then we need to pray that they would repent, that they would turn away from those sins and put their faith in the person of Jesus Christ. And as they do that, they become a new creation. They become born again. They become a child of God. And as we pray for people, we must fill our minds and we must fill our words with, or our mouths with words of faith. Declaring God's words in faith as we speak to ourselves, as we speak to other people, as we pray. Ezekiel 37, verse 4 and 5. God is speaking to the prophet Ezekiel in this verse. It says, Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And so the words that we speak should be words of faith. In these verses, the prophet Ezekiel was instructed to prophesy to these, this field of dry bones, laying there disconnected from one another. And he was commanded to speak to these dry bones to come to life. And I believe that vision, we're not going to go into it in its entirety, but is a picture of what happens when a person is saved. Their life before Christ is like, Dry bones. They are dead to God. They have no spiritual life. But when, these, when the person is born again, the Holy Spirit comes and brings life to the dry bones. And so as we pray for those who are not yet saved, our words should be full of faith. Our words should be prophesying that God is going to take those dry bones and cause them to come together, to be clothed with flesh, for that person to be born again. Sometimes when we pray, our thoughts are negative thoughts. Our thoughts become thoughts of doubt, of unbelief. 
we begin to be tempted to think, oh God, this is never going to happen. Oh God, maybe I should quit. This is not working. Rebuke those thoughts. Don't give in to them. Say, God, I know it's your will for this person to be saved. And I'm going to continue praying until I see it happen. I'm not going to give up. You put that burden on my heart. Another story of a woman named Pam. She had been living without God for a while, but her mother passed away and she began to think about eternity. As many people do when someone passes on. And she gave her life back to God. And she began to pray for her brother, Brian, who'd strayed away from the faith as she had, from the faith of his mother. And while he was stationed in Asia, he had married a Buddhist, who of course was not a believer in Christ. And Pam prayed for her brother, continued to pray, asking that the Holy Spirit would break the bondages, asking the Holy Spirit to draw him back to the Lord. She prayed after she became a believer for months. And then the months stretched into years. And after two years of prayer, with little contact with her brother, she got a phone call. And he called and told her that he had found the Lord and was going to follow him. Later, his Buddhist wife came to visit Pam and she shared the gospel with this, his wife who was a believer in another religion and she gave her heart to Jesus as well. And so two people lost came to Christ through the prayers of this woman. Two new spiritual children of God were birthed. And so it's really a wonderful mystery. You and I cannot save somebody. We cannot argue somebody into the kingdom, although we can be witnesses, but somehow God works through us. He works through our prayers. He works through our witness to do a work in a person's heart. And together, as we work with God, they become saved. They become children of God. So in order to see the lost saved, we need to be persistent in our prayers until the answer comes. We mustn't grow weary as we're tempted to from time to time. But rely on God's strength. We accept the Lord's burden. God will burden your hearts for certain people. Continue to pray for them. And if God speaks to you and tells you that it's time, speak to them. Speak to them the words that God gives to you as a witness. Speaking words of faith both to ourselves and we can pray with other believers from time to time about a person that you're praying for. We can join together in our prayers to see a breakthrough happen. And as we pray, as we sow these seeds of prayer and faith, eventually the seeds will sprout, a harvest will come, and people will come into the kingdom of God. So what we're praying for, for people, is to take three simple steps. You don't have to say it exactly like this, but this is the, really the core of the gospel. There are many verses that back this up. A person needs to admit that they've sinned. They need to repent and turn away from that sin and believe that Jesus died, that their sins might be forgiven. He didn't stay dead. He rose from the dead. He's alive today. And we commit our lives to following Him as our Lord and Savior. I'd like to ask everyone now to bow your heads. We're going to pray a simple prayer. And if you never prayed a prayer like this before, I encourage you to pray it. If you have and you'd like to recommit your life to Jesus Christ this morning, that would be a good thing to do as well. So let's pray. Father, today, I admit that I've sinned. I've done wrong things. I've been following my own plan for my life, not yours. Today I repent. I, I turn away from those sins. I believe that Jesus died on the cross, paid the penalty for my sin that I might be forgiven. Please forgive me. 
I believe you rose from the dead. I ask you to come into my life. I commit myself to following you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.